Creek flows for over 50 kilometres from Melbourne's northern fringes to the inner city suburb of Abbotsford, where it joins the Yarra and heads for the sea. The Merry Creek is today a favourite spot for relaxation and recreation. It provides a wild, welcome relief from the concrete and asphalt environment of the city. But it hasn't always been like this. For many years, the Merry Creek was largely abandoned and ignored, a wasteland of litter, wrecked cars and industrial rubbish. But thankfully things have changed. In the early 1970s, environmental groups working along the creek decided to join together to work towards the restoration and regeneration of the creek. The Friends of Merry Creek, a volunteer organisation dedicated to protecting this undervalued and long neglected waterway, continue this work today. We became involved in, the, in 1976 when um, the Brunswick Community Group was operating and we formed a Mary Creek Action Group in Brunswick. Yeah. There were a number of local action groups then and they could see that there was no point just operating in, in isolation in small parts of the creek. It was really a good idea to get together and in fact to get the councils involved as well. And so uh, there was a, a meeting in 1976, uh, the first meeting of the Mary Creek Coordinating Committee, which did involve all the councils, at that stage seven councils, and community groups from along the creek. And um, the whole thing's just grown from, from there. We're a community organisation with a bit of a difference. There's a strong advocacy part of Friends of Mary Creek. It's about being out there advocating on issues. The great strength has been the common vision that both the Friends members and, and um, virtually all the organisations that have been involved in the coordinating and management committee for the creek, um, everyone has shared that, that environmental vision and um, worked towards that. One of the group's biggest campaigns was to stop the building of a freeway through Melbourne's northern fringes. The original alignment for that freeway crossed, was down the creek valley and crossed the creek a number of times and would have really wiped out some very significant native grasslands. Although the road went ahead, the Friends were successful in having plans changed to minimise damage to the creek and its surrounds. At the moment our big, our big push is obviously to get this regional park and I mean we've, um, you know, we've, I think we've undertaken pretty strong advocacy around that. The Mary Regional Park is designed to protect open space corridors of important native vegetation along the creek, home to many species of plants and animals. While the Friends welcomed Park Victoria's release of the long-awaited plans in March 2006, they are concerned that they do not go far enough in protecting some of the significant areas along the creek. We've got areas up there that are under severe threat We've got significant species up there, threatened species, you know, the growling grass frog, the golden sun moth, and of course some of the remnant vegetation, a lot of it. Um, and you know, we want something that's not, not just to protect the environment, but something that's a real asset for the communities up there, those people who will be up there, something they can treasure and something they can value. Galata Tambor is an area in Melbourne's north that the Friends have been protecting since their inception. This is um, called Galata Tambor. It's uh, Wurundjeri language for stream water hole. And it was named that um, by the Wurundjeri people only fairly recently. There's a lot of uh, Aboriginal um, archaeology in it, here in this area. They've found sc stone scatters and um, there's a couple of uh, scar trees around. So it, it, it's a known um, place where the people used to, used to s stay. The freeway, as you can see, has gone through along there, which is something we, another thing we didn't want to happen, but has. And uh, that's a um, pedestrian bridge that you can see over there. But before that went up, you could be here and just look for miles and sort of feel like you're in the middle of the country, but um, 
actually in the suburbs. <laughs> Come right down. Down here it's very quiet. All you can hear is the creek really and a few birds. Um, and it's, uh, you could be miles and miles away from the suburbs and yet here we are and basically right in the middle, you know, just on the outskirts of the of the main suburbs in Melbourne, and there's still lots more out there that further. This is sort of similar to the way the creek would have been a lot of the way, you know, before we, we destroyed it, if you like. But, uh, yeah, it's terrific, isn't it? <laughs> Do you like it? The Friends of Mary Creek undertake a variety of projects and offer a number of ways for people to become involved in the conservation and protection of the Mary Creek. We've got the, the hands-on um, weeding and, and um, planting as well as the water quality testing and there's, um, there's also litter, uh, litter clean-ups. These litter cleanups are led by longtime member Paul Prentice. He and other volunteers work hard to keep the litter problem under control. Uh, right, well, uh, I have hated litter ever since I was a kid. Uh, I used to come down and do uh, cleanups of the creek uh, on my own way back in the 1970s. Harold. Harold is my most uh, regular, regular participant. He's he's there nearly every every time, and he was the one who developed the hooked poles to uh, pick stuff off overhanging branches. Uh, he's also donned his waders and paddled out into the creek to retrieve tyres from the middle of the stream. So he's uh, a well organised and enthusiastic character. Uh, got an order of Australia or something for his general community service. People back in, in the 20s and 30s thought that private property stopped at their back fence so anything could be thrown over and creeks were drains. When they would be cleaning the gutters they would sweep the stuff and put it down the drain mm. which finished up in the creek. Well now from that sort of attitude we've gone to where we're playing paint platypuses on these uh, drains from the creek and so what goes down these uh, drains finishes up in the creek, the Yarra and the Bay. Picking up old bottles and cans, and there's even foam like um, polystyrene and lots of plastic bags that are tangled up. This is a beautiful area, and I think um, more people should enjoy it. And one way we can help to enjoy the area is by keeping it clean and um, being aware of where we put our rubbish. And part of the reason I'm here today is because I'm interested in the environment and I wanted to use my, my energy to help out. From getting their hands dirty cleaning up the creek to educating the community on the importance of the Merry Creek environment, the friends are active throughout the year. For over three years, the stream team have been gathering on the first Sunday of each month to test the creek's waters and assess its health. One of the ways they do this is to take a bug count, where different types of bugs are collected, counted and identified. 
there's some bugs that are in the sensitive, very sensitive bracket, there's some that are in the sensitive and others in the tolerant and very tolerant. So if you're only getting bugs down in the tolerant bracket, then it's indicating that the stream is too healthy. Whereas when you get a range, then it's indicating that the stream is better. And going by the scores that we've been getting, it looks like it's getting better. In particular, we've got more of the caddis fly larvae. Until early last year, I hadn't seen any of those. So it was really exciting to see to see them. Um, I've seen aerial photographs of the creek near where I live 40 years ago, and it's just like horrible wasteland, just grass, not a tree in sight practically, and to see what it looks like now, it's just amazing the difference. The Friends of Mary Creek also run wildflower walks. These walks reveal the usually unseen plants and animals that live in these areas and some of their secrets. Many of the native grassland species here don't really rely too much on producing lots of seed. They just rely on re-sprouting after a fire. A, a, a chance to actually regenerate might be very, very rare to regenerate from seed. Um, so they put a lot of store into actually making sure they stop the fires. The native grasslands are coated. Has everyone had a look at one? This is a female one. She has a ovipositus, the sort of orangey spiky thing. So when she mates, and it's presumably the male's calling to attract these to, to mate, and then when she's mated, she the juveniles live under the ground. So she'll then poke the ovipositor into the ground and lay eggs into the ground for the babies to live underground. Which is the same, the big green grass ones live underground as well and that's why you sort of don't see them for a long time and then suddenly there's this deafening roar in the suburbs where they're mm -hmm. eating the appropriate trees. To maintain these habitats and to rebuild those that are damaged, the friends conduct regular plantings along the creek. What we're planting today is actually replacing some of the, the trees that were, were planted 15 years ago that were getting too big for the under the power lines. These habitats are home to many species, including the growling grass frog and the golden sun moth. Both endangered and both reliant on the creek and its surrounds for their survival. Jeff Hurd is studying the growling grass frog and gave a presentation to Friends members. So they were once abundant throughout the catchment and uh Anecdotal evidence suggests that they were crawling, the creek was crawling from right down to Coburg in the 60s and 70s. They were not only in the creek, but also many off-stream the plants. Um, but today the berry population is in decline. And this is where I embarrass myself and um, uh, do a call for you. So they, the call is... <laughs> they really like it if you go... Because that's the boys, but that part of the call is the boys telling them to, telling each other to go away. <laughs> and you do that to them, it really antagonises them and they get all excited. The golden sun moth was discovered living along the creek by Friends members. Each summer, the Friends of Mary Creek conduct a moth survey, where volunteers count the moth population to learn more about these endangered creatures. Brian Bainbridge was instrumental in discovering the moth's existence along the Mary Creek. This is a really big population across 300 hectares. We've found at least a couple of other what seem to be quite large populations and a couple of small populations just in the immediate area. And the next closest population is at Mount Piper in Broadford. And um, until we found this population, there were only five known extant populations of the sun moth. Uh, found in Victoria and a few more in Canberra. Um, well, we were out here doing chili needle grass spraying and serrated tussock spraying in December 2003. And right at the end, last day, and I was seeing these um, dark, what I thought were butterflies flying above the grasses. and. Um, after uh, watching them and trying to get a close look, because I realised I hadn't seen anything quite like that before, um, 
a memory was tweaked in my mind of a brochure <laughs> that um, I'd been given a couple of month, a couple of years earlier, uh, and it actually memory twigged. Oh, that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> I was very excited, but of course I couldn't confirm until I'd actually caught one and could see the features in the hand. And so we came out later with Wendy Moore, um, a friend's member, and together we actually, um, I bought myself a butterfly net and we actually ended up catching one and confirming it and jumped up and down. Incredible experience, just wow, you know, this is such a rare species and how and knowing how important these kind of things can be for the conservation status for for attracting attention and getting community out and about. Um, and just to prove to people how important a uh, something that people don't recognise as important can be. Have you seen some? Yeah, we've seen about five. Yeah. What do they look like? They're really dark and small and they Quick. move really fast and they zigzag. They squeeze their entire adult life into just a few hours, basically. Um, if they're lucky, they'll live for two days, but as we saw today, a lot of them actually get caught by the robber flies and dragon flies and everything else that's all trying to nab them. They may be living underground for two years and then they burrow up and um, emerge, um, and they'll only emerge on a nice warm day. They don't bother coming up on a cold day. During the 2005 Golden Sun Moth Survey, Friends of Merry Creek counted 1,254 golden sun moths, an excellent result. Volunteer members are the lifeblood of the Friends of Merry Creek. They come from all walks of life, all ages, and have a variety of interests and reasons for joining. Every, every age group's involved and it's, it's a... Um... It's a, it's a great opportunity to meet people who might live in your area who you wouldn't otherwise meet. Sandy Simpson joined the Friends in October 2005. Everyone's very friendly and they've got a very good reputation. And um, secondly, because they're very experienced. A lot of the people involved have had a lot of experience. And they're very well organised and they're very, very active. So it's good fun and learn a lot and meet a lot of people as well. And get things done, I guess. Yeah, get things done, yeah. yeah. The Merry Creek continues to flow through grasslands, past factories, houses and parks. Its present condition is a huge improvement on its neglected past, but there is still much work to be done. The Friends of Merry Creek are dedicated to carrying out this work. They have a vision for the creek's future and for the future of its inhabitants. It's been really great to see platypus living in the Mary again. So that's, that's one you know, long-term visionary aim for the friends, is to get the platypus back. Aitken Creek, bushland and a bike path to ride. Brunswick's got series ecological guide. Coburg Lake, bird life and family fun. Dites Falls where Mary and Yarra are one. Eucalypts, best known Australian trees. Fish ladders make climbing rivers a breeze. Golden sun moths with their nuptials so quick. Herbicides used when naught else does the trick. Ibis, innumerable insects ingest. Dukes Road has grasslands and a station out west. Kingfishers typify birds coming back. Landcare has rural folk on the right track. Management committee with know-how and heart. Newsletter calendar for those who take part. Oldest, such elegance, such grandeur below. Platypus happily go with the flow. Quarries Park playground activity reigns. Rushall, a garden, a village and trains. Sumner Estate, where we came on the scene. Tessellated pavement just north of Desheen. Understory. Modest but vital small plants. Vink, native floor of the place to enhance. Wetlands for creatures that swim and or fly. Xerophytes thrive where conditions are dry. Yabbies show the merries not too badly stressed. Zebra finch zigzags with zip, zeal and zest. <laughs> 